everyone. This is Jennifer Brown with the North Carolina Cooperative Extension Service in Person and Granville Counties. I want to remind everybody that March is National Nutrition Month and the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics wants you to eat right, bite, bite, bite. So we're going to go through uh, a little bit of information to help you this March do just that. So kind of this presentation is uh, just to overview, give you some three simple steps to help have a healthy lifestyle, give you resources to help you improve your eating style, and explain how to use the new nutrition facts labels to make the best decisions about your food and beverage. Um, this is a wonderful handout that is on the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics website at eatright.org, or you can contact um, the Extension Office and let me know, and I can mail you a handout. But the whole point of it is we want you to make simple steps for a healthful lifestyle, small changes. Just keep it simple. Don't change everything at once because it's not feasible and it's not going to help you in the long run. First, eat a variety of nutritious foods every day. So making sure that you um, have a lot of color, a lot of variety. Again, eat a rainbow. This includes a lot of healthful foods from all the food groups. Hydrating, uh, drinking water specifically, learning how to read your nutrition facts labels, and practicing portion control. So even if you have a lot of good food, making sure that you're eating uh, good amounts and not overeating. And also just take time to enjoy your food. Be mindful about why you're eating, how fast you're eating, all of those different things. Planning your meals is very important. It's good to use a grocery list to shop for healthful foods. You can uh, buy things that are fresh, frozen, or canned. Any of them is good. I always like keeping some things on hand um, in case there's an emergency. Or, or again, I just don't feel like going to the grocery store or can't find any fresh food that I like at the moment. If you are dining out, uh, making sure that you're looking at the menus and trying to find the best options and that you're choosing good recipes to make during the week. You're enjoying healthful eating no matter where you're at. And that if you are traveling or are out and about, making sure that you plan healthful meals while traveling or take some snacks with you, just different to help. Learning skills to create tasty meals. There's a lot of wonderful cooking videos and um, online and that you can watch of how to make this. You can even if you have a laptop or a tablet, even keep those in your kitchen while you're cooking and kind of watch the video and do this step by step. And you can pause just making sure that you're also being food safe and you're not touching your keyboards or your tablets or your computers while you're touching raw foods and making sure that you're keeping your workspace clean. Um, sharing meals together as a family when possible and reducing food waste and trying new flavors and foods. Staying away from the salt and trying to add more herbs and spices is always key. Consulting a registered dietitian nutritionist. This is something I always recommend to people when they start asking me about specifics about what they should eat or what they should stay away from is I am not a certified um, registered dietitian. So I want to make sure that you're consulting the right person. You can ask your doctor for a referral to a registered dietitian. Um, I would always check with your insurance companies. Most times a uh, visit with or a discussion with a registered dietitian is covered by your um, insurance company. They'll give you that personalized nutrition advice to help meet your goals. They can specifically plan a meal that's tailored around whether you're a diabetic, whether you have heart issues, different things like that. Um, again, going to the eatright.org website. This is the website for the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. They have so many good recipes, tips for good uh, smart food choices, a variety of different videos that I was talking about, and so many different activities for you, your kids, your entire family. Um, but no matter what, remember the key of this was start simple and using that my plate. So going to the choosemyplate.org website is a wonderful um, place. Starting simple with my plate, focusing on whole fruits, varying your vegetables, half your grains or whole grains, um, varying your protein up, not always just having the same protein, switching it up. Um, again, that website is choosemyplate.gov. Sorry, it's choosemyplate.gov. I think I said it wrong the first time. Um, again, and here, here is that, uh, that link right there listed. And this is what the My Plate is. This is what your plate should look like. Half of that should be fruits and veggies. It needs that color. It doesn't just need to be meat, bread, and potatoes. 
um, that doesn't cut it anymore. You need that variety because all of those different colors are going to give you the nutrients that you need. Um, and again, the reason why we emphasize this is we want you to have healthy eating patterns. This is not a quick diet just to lose weight or, you know, get your uh, numbers down or, or something like this. We want you to have a long term healthy eating patterns because that's really what's going to make the difference. That's what's going to reduce that risk of heart disease, reduce that risk of diabetes, certain types of cancer, overweight, obesity. Making half of your plate, again, fruits and vegetables, that's the hardest one, I think, for, for people. Um, and that needs to be about one to two cups of fruits a day and one, one and a half to three cups of veggies a day. Um, but again, even within those groups, making it a variety, not eating the same veggie because carrots are really good for your, your eyesight, you know, so you need to eat those as long with your green leafy vegetables, too. They're both good, but you need a, a good variety. When you are including dairy, uh, we want it to be low fat or fat free. So again, that 1% or skim milk or reduced fat cheeses, yogurts, any of those kinds of, of things. Look at the, the labels. No matter what type of dairy product you get, it's going to have the same amount of calcium. So it's not like whole milk uh, has more calcium for you. No, it has more fat and it has more calories. So eating more whole grains. Um, so again, it, a lot of people are fearful about grains, so you don't want to cut this out. This is one of your five food groups, but we want them to be whole grains. So when you are having those bread, those rice, those different things, making sure it's brown rice, it's whole grain noodles, it's whole grain bread, those different kinds of things are what we want you to be focused on. And the way to know if it's a whole grain is you have to read the nutrition label. You have to look at that uh, ingredient list and make sure the first ingredient is a whole grain. When you are eating protein, protein is a very important thing. It uh, includes your meats, but it also uh, you can get protein from your beans and your peas, uh, eggs, peanut butter, different things like that, and seafood. We recommend seafood twice a week, such as salmon, tuna, or tilapia. Um, when you are eating meat, no matter what kind of meat, select the leaner cuts of meat, those round steaks, roasts, or even your skinless poultry. Taking the skin off is very important. The white meat versus the dark meat of poultry um, is, is healthier for you. Making sure that um, you're uh, cooking it uh, appropriately as well, being food safe, but when you are looking at the leaner cuts of meat, um, making sure that you're not adding, you know, extra fat or that you're watching the portion size. OK, so even if you are eating a red piece of meat, which is fine, don't have a 16 ounce, you know, <laughs> steak. Um, portion size for protein is about uh, three to five ounces, which is kind of the size of your the palm of your hand. So take a look at the palm of your hand right there. That's about how big your protein should be. No more than that. Um, so this line talks about the two different nutrition labels. We have the original one that a lot of people are used to, and then we have this new one that we've uh, started switching over to. The main big uh, differences you'll notice right off the bat are um, the servings per container. So they've just put that first and foremost, and they've changed how they've done it. Um, they've made the serving size and the calories uh, bigger and bolder so you can see it. So you need to pay attention to that um, on the slide where it has the new label there serving size is two-thirds of a cup if you are eating a whole cup of this particular product you're getting more calories than it says okay because the 230 calories is only for two-thirds of a cup so you're gonna have to do some math if you eat more food um, this also just kind of shows you a little bit in more color the serving size the amount of calories it does break down the percent daily value and the nutrients right there that's the main uh, part of the the information this label is uh, based on uh, a 2000 calorie diet that's what the footnote says so we're gonna break that nutrition label down even further the nutrients that you want to get more of is that fiber and the vitamin D, calcium, iron, and potassium. Those are the things that we don't care if those numbers are high. We want those numbers to be high. But there are nutrients that you want them to be lower or zero. The nutrients that you want to get less of are those saturated fats and trans fats. So I'm not looking at total fat because if it has um, peanuts are really high in fat, but they're high in unsaturated fat. Fish is high in fat, but it's high in unsaturated fat. Those are the good heart healthy fats, okay, the unsaturated ones. So we want you to specifically look, instead of total fat, look at the saturated and the trans fats. We want that to be zero or as low as we can get it. 
sodium, that's salt. We want that number to be as low as we possibly can get it. And then they've changed the sugars on the label. So it has total sugars on the new label. And then underneath that, of the 12 grams of sugar in this uh, product right here, 10 of those 12 are added sugars. So they're not from a natural source like fruit. So if you compare a box of Raisin Bran to a box of Fruit Loops, they're both going to have about the same amount of total sugar. But then when you look at that line lower, Fruit Loops is going to be pretty much all sugar because there's not a single bit of actual fruit in there. Where the sugar from the Raisin Bran is coming from the raisin. So yes, sugar is still sugar and your body doesn't recognize the difference, but you're getting the nutrients from the raisins, okay? And it's probably going to be less calories and, and overall less, um, you know, bad for you. So again, again, limiting that saturated and trans fats, specifically trans fats, are really bad for you. Limiting that sodium and those added sugars. And um, overall, again, every little bit, every little bite. Again, this is eat right, bite by bite. Every little step you can make to improve your nutrition is a step in the right direction. We want to make sure that you're using credible sources for your information. So again, eatright.org choosemyplate.gov are wonderful resources. And no matter what you're eating, read your nutrition facts and have a happy, healthy National Nutrition Month. If you have any questions, again, you can always contact the Extension Office in Person County at 336-599-1195 or in Granville County at 919-603-1350. Thanks for tuning in.